Hi, I'm Sarah Gilday, and welcome to Five Minutes in Rome. Caravaggio was born outside of Milan in 1571 to a family who worked for some very influential people, including the Sforza and Colonna family. Caravaggio's father died from the plague when he was only five years old, and he will not grow up to be the mellow, agreeable, soft-spoken orphan artist that Raphael was. Caravaggio will become commonly known as one of the bravi, street punks who hung in gangs, frequenting bars, prostitutes, and fights. By the age of 22, Caravaggio had already completed his painting studies under a student of Titian, and he came to Rome where he became the typical starving artist, painting heads as they called it, or fruit and flowers, and trying to make connections. Rome at this time was in the middle of a great renewal. Around 30 new churches were being built or restored. Caravaggio will get his lucky break in 1599 with the famous Contarelli Chapel in the Church of St. Louis of France. And his first painting will be rejected. But let's look at why. This subject is really touching on the Catholic doctrine of inspiration. What is inspiration? How much is inspiration? This is a heated topic for non-Catholics, so the last thing the church needs is a painting of a dumbfounded Matthew having his hand pushed around by an angel. This new Saint Matthew will better reflect Catholic doctrine. Matthew is the primary author. The angel is merely reminding him of some points. This painting will be considered so well done that this angel will be copied by the artist Valentin for another painting. Let's take a look at some of Caravaggio's other new ideas. His use of light, for example. He looked to see where the light was coming into the chapel, and he extended that light onto his painting. Also, no pastures or landscapes, as was popular in the past. He uses common people off the streets as his models. And of course, there is Caravaggio, checking you out to see if you like the painting. From this commission, Caravaggio will receive others, the Church of St. Augustine, Santa Maria del Popolo, and Chiesa Nuova. Unfortunately for him, at times he used one of his prostitute girlfriends as models for saintly figures. And with each successive commission, Caravaggio became more arrogant and more of a troublemaker. At the age of 34, he had been arrested, imprisoned, or fined in Rome more than 11 times for brawling, sword fighting, assault, or other charges of violence. Caravaggio was his own worst enemy, and finally on May 28, 1606, he killed a man in a sword fight. Caravaggio ran to Naples, which was Spanish territory at the time, and gets into trouble. He runs to Malta, where the Knights of Malta take him in, try to help him, and he gets into trouble. He escapes to the island of Sicily, and as his life goes downhill, his paintings get darker and darker. His paintings will also take on a more meditative and penitent air. In one of his final paintings, I think the most telling, he paints himself as Goliath, and that abbreviation on the sword will tell us more than most people realize. Humilitas acidat superbium. Humility kills pride. Caravaggio will get a papal dispensation. He will be invited back to Rome and forgiven of all of his crimes. But through a series of mishaps, he will die of basically typhoid or salmonella in the year 1610. He was only 39 years old. Rome is currently preparing for the 400th anniversary of the death of Caravaggio, the year 2010. If you plan on coming to Rome anytime soon, why not book a private tour of Caravaggio? I'll take you down to various streets where Caravaggio walked, show you where he actually lived, show you where he got into that famous sword fight that ended in a murder, and I'll take you to some of the more prominent churches where his paintings still hang. We will talk about painting before Caravaggio, what led up to him, and I'll show you where he actually copied Michelangelo in two different paintings. We will talk also about Caravaggio's growth and development as an artist. This is very difficult to do in just a short video. And finally, our gift to you, the souvenir booklet. This helps supplement our talks and it's our free gift to you. So if you'd like to go on a tour with me in the history of Caravaggio walking through the streets of Rome, simply stay tuned for the website information coming up next. And thank you for watching.